You sure this has nothing to do with your mom? It doesn't have anything to do with my mom. Dang, 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 dang. Um, I'm Megan Griffiths. Uh, I'm here to host this uh, Q&A for um, Sophie Jones, which I loved. And uh, I'm going to introduce who's with me here. Um, so first of all, I, maybe you guys could just give a little wave uh, when I say your name, just so people know who's who, although it's all on the screen, I guess, too. But um, first, we have Jesse Barr, who is the director and co-writer and pr a producer on the film. And then we have Jessica Barr. Uh, not the same person who played Sophie and also co-wrote the film with Jesse. Also from the cast, we have Skylar Verity, uh, who played Kevin, uh, Charlie Jackson, who played Lucy, and Dave Roberts, who played Aaron. And uh, we have producer Lindsay Guerrero also. So now, um, Jesse, if you wouldn't mind kicking things off by kind of taking us through the genesis of this project, what compelled you to tell this story and, and get this onto the screen? Yeah, it's it's a kind of an, an epic odyssey of a story in many years in the making. A um, little bit of context, uh, I lost my dad when I was 16 and I never spoke about that loss and I never, um, yeah, really talked about it. I kind of ran from it, to be honest, for, for most of my life, sort of like running from the truth of who you are. Um, and then I was almost around the time that I'd been alive with him as long as I'd been alive without him, that I started to sort of open a little bit to that grief and feel like, oh, maybe this is something I should dance with. And at that time, my cousin, Jessica Barr, sent me a raw early draft of a script that was inspired by her experiences grieving the loss of her mother. She also lost her mom when she was 16. So we had this crazy like mirroring and there was this reflexivity, the same name, the same time losing a parent. Um, it just became this overwhelming thing to jump into. Um, started by just giving her notes and us talking. She asked if I would be interested in directing it. We started writing the script together that would become Sophie Jones. Um, and it really was just kind of an immersive, immersive moment, <laughs> pretty immediate. Yeah. Wow. I, I mean, I really resonated around the themes of loss. I, you know, we've all, I, I think everyone experienced some loss in the last year. Um, I lost my mother four years ago. Um, and it just, uh, it really, um, felt like a really interesting portrayal of grief. And I was interested if, if, Jesse and Jessica, if you might be able to talk about the process that character goes through and the um, and how the experimentation, the sexual experimentation kind of factors into that, the sort of interesting pieces where she's tasting the piece of bone and the blood and stuff, just like how all that came to you as you were writing it and how all that relates to the process of her grief. Jay, you wanna kick it off? Um, I feel like I was kind of just writing based off of my experience at first and um, I think Jesse helped me shape it so it wasn't more of I feel like when I first sent it to her it was more of like a comedy almost like a, a dark comedy and I think those aspects are still there but I was more kind of like kind of looking back on um, my memories of high school. And I feel like that has to do with the time kind of aspect that a lot of people have talked about with the film where it's, there's not like a linear kind of journey of Sophie. And similarly, when I was looking back on times in high school, it was just kind of these moments that popped up in my mind that had to do with the loss of my mother, but also other things that I was going with, going through at the same time. And um, also when you're grieving something and going through something pretty traumatic, you tend to block out a lot of things. So I think also that plays with like the time jumps. It's like, I, I'm not sure I could put things together. And so then um, Jesse helped me kind of like shape kind of the major themes and 
she was the first person who talked to me about kind of like threading through ideas. Like if you um, introduce something like the photography aspect and the artistic aspect of Sophie, like make sure to thread that through the whole time. Jesse, do you want to talk about it? Yeah, yeah, we also talked about how, yeah, there's not one way of course that you process grief, but for the character of Sophie, um, it's sort of like eroticism as the antidote to grief. And I know Jessica and I talked a lot about like when you feel this groundlessness, like the rug has been ripped out from under you or the world has been fractured, there's this disembodied feeling. And so one of the ways that, that you can uh, grasp to you know, come back to humanity or come back to earth is by seeking to re-embody yourself. And so for Sophie, that touch, breath, kissing, right? And a lot of that wanted to show in the soundscape and you know, play with a lot of silence so we can hear skin on skin and you know, the scratching of a box or um, have that sort of evocative quality really present in the film on all levels. Um, and yeah, and originally there were flashbacks and, and um, I, it was really important, I felt narratively to like make this Sophie's story and give us her experience. So we're breathing every breath with her and taking every step with her. So I knew I wanted it to be immediate and visceral and really from her point of view and for it to be a really respectful um, experience from an audience's perspective, right? Not something that we're like putting on or commenting on, but something that uh, you can you can experience with her in real time. Yeah. Um, I want to mention uh, just before I forget that for anyone who's watching, um, there's a little Q&A button down at the bottom and you can add your questions to the mix. I'm going to keep asking mine until I see a few pop up in there, but um, please uh, feel free to to chime in. Um, I uh, was interested in, Jesse, if you could talk a little bit about your history as a filmmaker and how did you put together this team that you got together for this film? Yeah, so I started as an actor and um, in theater. And I do think like starting with um, making a play in a basement that you wrote in like a day with like toilet paper and no one shows up like that's how I started. And not that that's what independent film is, but there's that sort of very collaborative <laughs> egalitarian perspective that you have to have in independent film because like your hair is on fire and you have no resources and like you're trying to make things with peanut butter sandwiches and floss and you're trying to like make it beautiful and make it sore. So I think coming from that mentality, like every obstacle is an opportunity um, everything that could be uh, insane could actually be something awe-inspiring was just a sort of way of thinking that, that I folded into the work. Um, these collaborators, I mean, it's, it's, it's so wild how it all came together because it was so fast. Lindsay, I met through Joe Dinan, who's um, one of the other producers on the film. Joe, I've worked with on everything I've ever made. And I called him and I was like, I'm making this film. Do you know any producers in Portland? And he was like, yes. Lindsay Guerrero just moved there like two days ago. They had worked together on uh, Chasing Ice, a, a documentary. So I called Lindsay. I, we did not know each other. I was just like a wild woman. I like pitched her my vision for this film. I told her about, you know, Jessica and my story. And she just was insane, I guess, and dove in with me and never looked back. And like our day off during production, we went to get her wedding dress fitted. And, you know, like three years later, the movie's out and here we are. Um, but Lindsay has just, I can't say enough, you know, producers really are the unsung heroes of independent film. It's not a glamorous job. You don't get your name high up in the credits. Your face isn't everywhere but it does not happen without producers. And, and Jessica's a, a producer as well, Joe Dinan, Lindsay. It's like, it's tremendous, the amount of grit and work that it takes. And I cannot speak highly enough of, of them. Um, and the cast, I met so many incredible actors, Skylar included Charlie through Jessica. There's a, 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 a studio, an acting studio in Portland where a lot of young actors study and they're all so talented. Um, and then we also did like blasts on social media in Portland, you know, Katie Prentice who plays Denise in the film, this was her first acting job ever. And she just submitted and I saw her submission, her video and I talked with her on FaceTime and she was, she was the one. So it was really like a, 
confluence of events in a lot of different ways that that this all came together. Um, Lindsay, can you talk a little bit about uh, just getting the film made and, and all of the, I know any film is a gargantuan effort. So just how, how long was that process? What was that like for you? Um, well, we met in March, 2018 and um, I just went full, full steam ahead into this project. I was so passionate about it. I loved meeting both Jesse and Jessica and everyone else on the team. And, you know, just within like four months, we were in production, um, which is just kind of unheard of, but we are hustlers and we were doing fundraising events and we were putting everything into making this. And I think that that's the beauty of this project compared to so many other films is when you really love something you're doing and the people you work with, it, it, it happens because we all believed in it and we had a lot of faith in it and a lot of people believed in us and we're, thank we're so thankful to every person in Portland um, and the Portland film scene and all of our investors and friends and people who really championed us. I mean, they made this possible for us to even do what we're doing. So um, yeah, I think that's how we kind of like got it rolling and, and um, it's been an exciting journey. Yeah, congratulations. I know what a climb it can be to get a film made and uh, it's just like, and you're still, you've still got a ways to go because it's just getting out into the world, but it's yeah. really exciting. Um, Jessica, I was curious. So you and Jesse are your cousins, right? Um, I wondered about how it was working with a relative, like being directed by a relative and, um, and did, did what your relationship was before this film and after, I guess. Yeah, um, I never really knew Jesse. I mean, the age difference was my dad's one of nine. So we have a really big family. And wow. my first memories of Jesse was through family reunions. And I would be like 12 and super awkward and into like wearing juicy sweatsuits and not smiling because I had gold braces. And then Jesse was like so beautiful and went to NYU and was doing yoga. And honestly, was someone I really looked <laughs> I looked, I looked up to her in a lot of ways. And when I was um, auditioning for colleges, because I wanted to um, do an acting BFA, I went to LA and I stayed with her and Tom um, and she hosted me, which was really nice. And I, I interviewed her kind of over the phone about her time at NYU when I was thinking of maybe applying there. Um, and she was just always someone I really looked up to because she was making her own stuff and it was really great what I was seeing. And so when I first uh, wrote the first draft, she was one of the first people I sent it to because I didn't know anyone else who was really um, writing and making films. So at first I just wanted her um, advice. And then I think after like the second round of advice, I was like, you should direct this. <laughs> And she's like, uh, I'll think about it. <laughs> and then we talked a little bit more. Um, but I mean, I yeah, I didn't really have a super strong relationship, but then through writing with her and then getting to the point where we were actually filming, I felt like our relationship was pretty strong and we had talked a lot about um, both of our traumas. And um, yeah, I mean, our relationship went from like zero to 100. So, yeah. yeah, I'll test it though, getting on a set with anybody. Yeah. Um, I mean, I really loved her direction. I, I think she was really great. And also she just knew uh, when to push me and when not to push me. And I think it's difficult like being a writer and then acting in it and then giving someone else, you know, trusting them and like not being so controlly because I think you know I I love control I think a lot of people love control but it's it's good to uh submit sometimes and let someone else do it and I think Jesse did a really good job so. um Skylar um I wanted to ask you uh you sing in the film too and I was curious how that came about. You have a lovely voice, by the way. Um, and like, was that something that was baked in all along or was it something that happened spontaneously on set? Uh, no, we, we 
we didn't plan it really we were just like everybody was in LA like before we shot for some reason because most of us aren't from LA and we were all just getting dinner and like Jesse and I had talked about music then and um we kind of just put it on the back burner but then like one day she was like hey play something and so Jessica and I improv that whole kind of I think like that montage-ish scene and in the bedroom we kind of just improv stuff and it kind of just happened and it was cool and I think that was one take you know and you know and then we forgot about it and then it ended up in the film so that's cool yeah it sort of <laughs> provides a lovely background for a, for a variety of montage footage which I thought was really lovely so um yeah. were there a lot of improvisational moments like that was that part of the general process um, I I think so yeah I mean Jessica and I I don't know like because all of my scenes were with Jessica so I don't know how it was with you and other actors but we definitely took room to play around here and there but I mean the script is brilliant so I mean there wasn't really much need to do anything else other than that was written so <laughs> I remember actually like uh the scene where the New Year's Eve where Skylar follows me out and then we have this conversation. I think that was like the most improvised scene because the dialogue wasn't super strong and the want wasn't super strong. So I think we did it like 10 different times in different kind of ways. And the one we landed on, I thought, I think is like one of my favorite moments of the whole film because it's just so cringy, but so <laughs> real. <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like wow Sophie like this guy's just trying to like help you and you're just like sabotaging again but um I really loved that moment it's really it's really sad but also sweet. yeah and sorry and, and that also that scene was crazy to me because I don't think we really ever knew how it was going to turn out it was kind of just like you know the whole deal you're just like listening to each other and seeing what happened and like I, I love that scene too in the film. I thought it was, yeah. And I love, I love how it's just like one shot the whole time. Everything about it, I love it, yeah. Because one time you were crying at the end, I remember. There was yeah, I don't know why. Because <laughs> like, oh. I made you do it 40 times. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, that's why I was just like, like tired like, of it. I was like <laughs> but I do think um, the improvisation, I think is really important. And we did, I encouraged them a lot to either improv into scenes, improv out of scenes, or if something felt awkward in someone's mouth or it felt really written or it didn't sound right, giving them the freedom to, to move and breathe with it and play with it was really, really important because, you know, the most, the thing that we always were coming back to is like just telling the truth and having it be as honest as possible and as dropped in as possible. Um, and really listening and really responding and not necessarily trying to like hit a certain moment, like knowing what was needed in each scene, but then allowing there to, there to be freedom and exploration within it um, is I think the, the most important thing. And for me, improvisation is really freeing, but it can also be a nightmare. So you need really good actors in order to improv. So trusting them and they were all did such an incredible job, you know, to really, to really go, go there. Yeah. Uh, Charlie and Dave, um, do you have any memories from, like, I don't know how much you guys played around in your scenes, but um, do you have a, so how did it compare with other projects you've done? What was your experience on the set? Charlie, you want to go first? Sure. Um, this was my first film ever. Um, I was straight out of high school. And I remember Jessica asked me to audition and I was so just, um, starstruck because she we had gone to high school together and I'd always looked up to her as a mentor and I was kind of like sure I'll I don't know how to do a self-tape I'll just boop and I couldn't have asked for a better film to have it be my first because he was so supportive and Jesse was um just really encouraging and I never felt like I was acting or there was this big pressure it was just talking with with people and yeah it was very supportive place well I kind of agree with that I mean for me it was you know I love Jesse so much and and it just seemed so natural you know like I think we did a scene in the kitchen where we just improv the whole thing but it was just seemed right and it was fun and you know we had our little family so I, I mean I it was a lot of fun to, to be um, encouraged to just 
improv and do what you want and not feel that sort of pressure of having to, like you said, like hit something or it was, it was really fun. Yeah, that, that level of relaxation, I think, comes across. It feels very naturalistic and you guys are a great ensemble all together. Jesse, we're gonna uh, pop in with something. Oh, I was just gonna say, I'm so grateful to Dave for jumping in because we met in, in LA in um, an acting class, my husband's acting class, and I'd seen him work and do checkoff and like he's, you know, done so much film and television and for him to, to come on for this and really help to create, yeah, the sense of a family and to jump in the way you did, just so, so appreciative and um, yeah. Well, I had a blast I and mean, I'm very grateful to be part of it for sure. Uh, well, I have a bunch more questions, but I'm gonna I'm gonna do a few audience ones because I don't want to hog it. Um, Sandra Stevens has a question and is asking, "What was the significance of all the spaghetti dinners at Sophie's house?" <laughs> um, well, when my dad uh, took over, when my mom died, he didn't really know how to cook. <laughs> So the only thing he really knew how to make was spaghetti and a couple other dishes, but the spaghetti was really good. And um, he would make spaghetti for all my friends that came over. And I feel like that's actually something that people have commented on um, about why why are they making the same meal over and over again, like low production <laughs> value and all that. And I'm like, no, we meant to do that. And it's just, yeah. no. That's the other thing that it's like, and I, I found that too, either people would give us food so that my mom didn't have to cook or it would always be like the same thing because that doesn't take a lot of energy. You don't have to think about it or plan. And there's something about Aaron's character that I just felt um, too, that he, he does acts of service and like what he can do for Sophie is he can make sure she's fed like and make sure Lucy's fed and like they have their meals and they're taken care of in that in that way and those needs are met um so yeah that that was the some of the behind the the spaghettis <laughs> they have carbo loaded so they're good exactly. to go. lots of carbs <laughs> but they're also different types it wasn't all like the same type it was like penne and like you know. <laughs> a new noodle yeah. <laughs> there's variety um, okay so there's another question from ian smart he says i love small movies like this was there ever a moment when creating this beautiful thing that you felt the story was too small in a world of superheroes and capital b big movies how do you continue pushing to make something so intimate and feel justified doing so it's funny i think i think to me like the characters in this story and the characters in character driven movies are the ones that I feel are true heroes and like they may not wear capes and they may not be part of these like big mythologies but they are part of of the a certain mythology and I guess in making this it was more um really feeling on fire to tell this story and to make uh people feel seen that had lost that had lost in general, lost a parent. Um, also for young women who felt um, that they were told no or were you know, not really given respect or believed. I think the fact that the majority of our team um, is young women and women that sort of against all odds, like you know, pushed this out into the universe is, is of, of important. Um, but I think films about people are always going to be important. Um, and small, it's interesting. It's, I don't think of the film as small, I guess. Like the, the themes of coming of age films, you know, grief and, and love and your first love and like, you know, intimacy. These are like Shakespearean themes. They are huge. So yes, we're distilling them into this very specific and intimate story. Um, but in that specificity is hopefully universality. You know, that's the, the goal, the dream. Yeah. I can relate um, <laughs> to the small, but enormously emotionally big stories. Um, another question from Craig Horwich. Um, one of the salient characteristics of someone like someone in a trauma vortex is that they're stuck in a very narrow bandwidth of emotional access that leads to monodimensional experience. 
This is an intense question. Your film adheres to this limited emotional space, which must have been quite a limiting attribute when writing and creating this film. Very few movies stay in such a small space. Can you discuss how this affected your production? Well, I think, I mean, it was intentional because it's a, it's a portrait of, of Sophie's experience and wanting to, again, immerse us in her experience of grief and the very specific experience of it. Um, but something that um, my director of photography and I, Scott Miller, who's incredible and who's just like a, a bodhisattva, incredible human, threw himself into this with every fiber of his being um, and really trusted me. And I will never forget that. Um, he and I found that we started in, you know, staying very close with Sophie and very, um, you know, tight with her. But then as her grieving process evolved, as she started to open up to more people in her life, her family, other characters included, we also started to open up spatially. Um, and it is, you know, intentional that the last scene is the widest we ever get, right? Um, and trying to balance also the interiors, whether it's in Sophie's car or her bedroom, these sort of mini universes with the, the natural world and the natural beauty, which just when scouting in Portland with Lindsay and Jessica, it's so incredible. Um, and wanting to sort of find a balance between those more claustrophobic interiors that are very close to her and then those more spacious um, natural settings. Jessica, I have a, a question from your Aunt Mary. Um, she says, what was it like to be an actor playing a character who is in ways a version of yourself? Um, I feel like it was easy because <laughs> I didn't have to do much, but I think in a lot of ways, Sophie is a lot more bolder than I am. I think she's, um, a lot of the things that I wish I had been, um, when I was 16, um, very blunt and kind of just doing what she wants. Um, I definitely cared a lot about what other people thought of me and I definitely wasn't as social as her. I wasn't going to a lot of parties. I think I went to two. Um, so I think playing her in those kind of scenes was fun and exciting and um, obviously therapeutic. Um, I feel like I got a lot of free therapy out of doing this. So that was cool. Um, but yeah, obviously it was hard at some times. I think the hardest part of it was balancing um, my relationship with my sister and my dad while making it too. And just like being um, as honest as I could with them about the whole process, but then also kind of creating a barrier between us at certain times and kind of meeting them where they were at. Um, in terms of their grieving process, because I definitely, I feel like from the beginning and Sophie similarly um, processing the grief um, more just like fast, yeah. Um, got a question for uh, Jessica, Charlie and Dave. Um, how did you work on forming the strong familial connection, particularly in the wake of this heartbreaking moment the film surrounds? Did you know each other before this film? Sounds like a couple of you did. Charlie, and you want to kick it off, maybe? Yeah, um, like I said, I, I knew Jessica. Um, I didn't know Dave, but it was a pretty instant connection because he's just such a genuine, nice guy. And I, I remember um, one time we were driving to uh, one of the locations, and Jessica and I played Mamma Mia, the whole soundtrack. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the moment where it felt like, you know, I, I felt like he was my dad and I was <laughs> you really did not love that. Yeah. I, I felt like your dad. Yeah. So hundred percent. I'm like, get this music off. But my dad <laughs> loves Mamma Mia. That's like his jam. So definitely maybe not you know, 15 times that. and you know, like <laughs> not See, the familial bond is still yeah. here in this QA. Uh, yeah. I felt like we all connected very quickly um, and it felt like a family. I mean, I, that's the way I felt. It was very natural and um, yeah, I mean, it, I thought it happened fast for me. All right, I have a comment for you, not a question um, from Charles Coleman. Akira Kurosawa once said that human beings share the same common problems. A film can only be understood if it depicts these properly. 
Sophie Jones is a truly independent film that does not smooth its edges and feels like real life. Just wanted to congratulate you on the success of the authenticity that you brought to the screen. Quite impressive. Um, and then Sarah Barr asks, what was your favorite scene to film and why? Additionally, what was the most difficult part of the process? What surprised you when making the film? Can I just pop in and say shout out to Sarah because Sophie's room is Sarah's room and we took over her room and I was in there at like 5 a.m. putting up photos of Jessica's face and so <laughs> thank you Sarah for just being the most generous incredible cousin and sister um yeah shout out to Sarah does anyone have any favorite scenes they want to talk about or uh, things that surprised you making the movie um I oh uh, who wants to go, not me. I'll, I'll say something. Um, I think what was surprising and incredible was that, um, yes, this group right here, we made the movie in person, but um, so much of this happened with us not even living in the same city and not seeing each other. And, you know, we haven't even seen Joe this entire time that we've made this movie in person. And, um, you know, we've all had other jobs that this is not our, our full-time job. And I think that that's just um, incredibly impressive that we were able to pull something off like this. Um, if I'm thinking of like funny moments of production, there was, um, we were shooting in the bleachers and, um, <laughs> and at, at 500, value, up production value, 500 person soccer camp, um, started and, uh, and the sprinklers and it was like a 20 million different things going on. And it was just one of those moments where we were like, actually, this looks really good. We're going to use this to, <laughs> to our benefit right now. Um, but yeah, just, I'm just proud of all the moments that came together despite um, not being together, how crazy it was and yeah. You know, on that, on that note, I just noticed a question I missed. It's sort of a, on a similar track from Robin uh, Kammerling, I think it's pronunciation. The raw storyline of the film was inspired by a young woman who lost her mother. It's quite a Cinderella story. What concessions, additions were made to build production and to become what it is today? I think um, it was important that, um, you know, this be a, a story and a narrative. So, and it's hard because it's not a recreation and it's not a, a documentary, but, you know, it was intentional that I wanted it to be shot in a documentary style so that it felt very lived in and, and there was breath and movement, but that was also to serve the performances and the actors so that they could feel free to move around. Um, so that we could capture real moments and they could relax and, you know, improvise into the moments. And also because of independent film, there were a lot of locations that we didn't have access to until, you know, very, very right before shooting. Like Scott and I, I remember, were like hanging over this fence trying to look at the bleachers and we couldn't get in because the school wouldn't let us. So we're like hanging over the side of the fence and then like sketching, you know, like on my notepad and then like you know, looking at the light. And so, um, so I think it was sort of finding a delicate balance between honoring the truth of the story, but then also giving ourselves freedom to tell this as a narrative and to, you know, play and explore within that. So it becomes something else, you know, it becomes um, hopefully something even more expansive and, and universal. Yeah. Um, we got a question through a Scope email. Um, if it's not too late, I uh, wonder if there was an, an intimacy coordinator on the film. And uh, Jesse, how did you manage to ensure that your actors felt at ease and comfortable doing those sex scenes? So there was not an intimacy coordinator. I would, of course, love there to have been and everything moving forward that I do, absolutely. I think it's totally important and vital. Um, I think I was very lucky that these actors are incredibly uh, generous and communicative. And I worked really, really hard, especially with Scott, my director of photography. Um, I'd worked with him before as an actor, so I knew what it was like to be seen by him. I also knew him as a human. I knew I could trust him because he was gonna have to have such an intimate relationship, particularly with Jessica as Sophie. I needed to know I could trust this person and how he was seeing and how we were visioning her together. 
Um, so that was one piece of just the, the sort of looking, the, the sort of seeing. And then with the actors, we kept the sets really closed or small. You know, it was always just like me and Scott in the room with you know Jessica and Skyler or um, Jessica and Chase Overly who plays Tony. So keeping it really um, safe and supported as few people as possible. Um, and again, always communicating. Um, but yes, I think intimacy coordinators, it's I think incredible. And I wish if we'd had the resources, I definitely would have had someone, but um, yeah. But do you guys wanna to speak to, to that? Yeah, I mean, uh, like you said, like the director of photography changes the game, whether or not like it changes a whole performance just in terms of his presence in the room. Um, and working with Scott was an incredible experience because he's so quiet, <laughs> which seems like a given for a director of photography, but it is not. Um, and he is really, really wonderful. And he made it really comfortable, um, at least for me. So. <laughs> Yeah, I also feel lucky because I had acted with Skylar, not in a great capacity beforehand, but um, I had like seen um, him in sexual nature scenes, not as intense, but I think vice versa, we had seen each other in scenes that were sexual in nature. So I think we were more comfortable with doing scenes like that. It wasn't the first time I had done sex scenes, uh, not in front of a camera, of course, but I think we were lucky to have had that practice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I mean, we like also, I mean, having somebody there to kind of help with that's very important. And um, we had done a lot of like talking and discussing beforehand and making sure everything felt okay. And like, I felt, I didn't feel uncomfortable saying if something felt weird to me or you know so and we blocked out everything it was like a dance beforehand um and very technical and even like that flip <laughs> that he does that's like oh, in no. one of the montages I remember Jesse's like all right we gotta like figure this out and that was also I'm just thinking about like Jessica when you also choreographing like when Sophie is you know pushing and when she is receiving like all of that it is so like a dance um, and then once you practice it and you get in your body and it's choreography, then they know it, they can trust it, and then they can just go and it feels effortless, but it's not, um, yeah, it's not like off the cuff, let's fumble and find this because that could be uncomfortable. And yeah, it was so important that they feel really safe and really taken care of in those intimate moments because you guys just gave so much. And so you, in order to give, you have to feel safe. The way you're talking about this is reminding me of uh, our mutual friend, Lynn Shelton. And I was going to tell you that I, I had uh, some Lynn Shelton vibes watching the theater scenes in particular. I don't know if you've seen her first feature, We Go Way Back, but uh, is some sort of overlap there. And, and I worked on that with her. So it brought back good memories for me. And you and I were introduced by Lynn right before you started making this film. And I just wondered if you'd talk about how you guys met and what her influence has been. Thank you, Megan. Yes, I'm getting emotional. Um, yeah, um, I think when I was making this film at the very beginning, it, I felt like everyone thought I was insane. <laughs> and um, people told me I was crazy and, and it just felt like sort of an impossible dream um, to, to bring this story to life. Because as Lindsay said, you know, these, these actors are stars, they are, but no one knew who they were. No one knew who we were. There was no, there were no labs. There was no infrastructure. There were no resources. We built this, you know, from literally nothing. Um, like willing it to into existence is how I felt. I, I feel like I willed this into existence. Um, and meeting Lynn was at a screening of Outside In. And I looked up to her as a filmmaker because she didn't go to film school. She writes character-driven narratives. She has a beautiful balance of humor and heart. And she just made things. And she told the stories she wanted to tell. And she did them with the people that she loved. And she continued doing that through her career. So for me, it was like, this is a, a dream model mentor person that I look up to. And at a screening, we were introduced. And then I reached out to her. and was like, hey, I'm making <laughs> my first movie. Um, 
can I, you know, ask you some questions? And she was in the middle of like an edit, I think on sort of trust. And she was like, yeah, we'll take a walk. And so, um, and I was like, what, you know, after sort of you, you're told no, and no one pays attention. No one cares to have someone like sort of shine their light on you like that. I can't even explain what it means. Um, but we met at some park in LA and like walked and walked and walked. And I told her all the ideas for the film, like how I was thinking about it and what I wanted to do. And, and I was like, we have no money. And she was like, let me try to like, you know, introduce you to people who've done this in a similar way to try to get just some advice or even support, you know. Um, and then throughout the process, we we stayed connected and she, um, after the production, I, you know, I drove around the car with her and we talked about making movies and like marriage and, and relationship and collaboration. And, um, and she just was so warm and yeah, embraced me at screenings and wrote recommendations for me. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's I, I wish I could have showed her the film. I wish um, I could have been like, we did it, you know, like, um, but she's a bit a huge influence and, and um, I took a picture of uh, this car when we were walking through um, that first walk and, and she took a picture of it. And I, I took a picture because I wanted to see like what she saw. And there was like this woman on the hood and she was just like head first, like flying forward into the future. And I just, I look at that picture a lot and I think about her a lot and how generous she was. And, and I know that I wanna, you know, we all need to like carry the torch, you know, for her and her honor. and. Um, keep making films and and bringing everyone up absolutely yeah she was a, a a very good model of uh of lifting others up with you and uh and not just kind of charging forward selfishly just considering yourself so yeah um that's really lovely to hear all that um on the same similar note i was also curious about the nicole holoff center uh how she made her way into the production. Where, where did you guys meet and, and how did she become an executive producer? Yeah, so that's a crazy story. Um, I was at, I had a, a rough cut. So my editor, Naomi Sunrise Filamaro, who is incredible. She, again, like everyone just poured their heart into this film. I'm so grateful for her collaboration. She was so supportive and I learned so much from her and she really pushed me too to like make the bold choices I wanted to make even though they were experimental and weird. Um, but we had a rough uh, cut and I went to this talk um, for a Tribeca alumni in Los Angeles and Nicole was giving a talk and uh, Connie Britton was moderating and it was really small and um, and I never do this. I like, I'm not, I always feel like people like that go up to people afterwards are kind of insane. And so I was like, I'm never, but, but there was something in me that I just felt compelled and I just, I don't know, I just went up to her after this talk and we started chatting and I told her, you know, I have a, a cut of, of um, my first feature and I'd, I'd love your thoughts and, you know, and I think she said something like, well, I can't give my email to everyone. And I was like, well, you can give it to me. And I like gave her my <laughs> broken phone and it was cracked. And, you know, it's like, I haven't bought a new phone in like a decade and so embarrassing. My hands are like shaking. And, and, um, and, uh, and then I sent her the film and, and it's interesting, I think, you know, it's like, oh, she's gonna be too busy. She's never gonna watch it. Um, but she did. And, and she had really thoughtful things to say about it and was very supportive. And, and we just sort of struck up a, yeah, a relationship and, and she has become a mentor. And um, I, didn't, I didn't know about, you know, an EP or anything like that. Like the film, you know, we made the film and, um, but then I asked her if she would, you know, if she would come on sort of like as a way of putting her arms around, around the movie. And she just very generously um, did. So I'm very, very grateful to her for that. You're so bold. I am so impressed that you finagled her email address because I I also met her after a screening like 20 years ago and I did not get her email address. <laughs> Was her even email 20 years ago? Um, but uh, so I have just a couple other questions in the Q&A box and then I, I think probably it's, it's soon to be wrapped up, but just a couple comments about um, Lynn would love this movie. Um, and, and feeling her vibes. So just passing those along. We also got another question from Sandra Stevens asking from Mike Pullen for Dave and Charlie, how did you approach your roles in supporting 
Sophie, while you were grieving too? Well, um, it was interesting for me because, you know, instantly I was kind of like, I wanted to be so um, passionate to my kids and give them all this support. And, um, and then Jesse kind of moved me a different direction. And then now I have two kids. I had a kid, Sophie is her name before. Um, but now I see it because it's just like, you, the only way you can really do it is just to take care of them the best you can. And you would do everything you can to take care of them. Um, so it, that whole kind of actor thing where, you know, oh, I have to feel so much. It just, it became so natural after Jesse kind of pushed me because I think it, you know, that's what you do. It, those are your kids. You know, that's the only thing you can do for them. You just do whatever you can, make spaghetti seven nights a week. You know, that's it, so. Charlie? Yeah, for me, I guess, um, just keeping in mind that this, although this was Sophie's story, that um, my character Lucy was had lost a mother too. And knowing that she had a backstory in my mind and bringing that in, um, but also knowing that the focus had to be on Sophie and um, making sure that uh, she shined in those scenes. Um, but yeah, I, I think just a lot of what Dave said, just showing support and drawing from your own life experiences um, really assisted in that. And we have a compliment slash question for Skylar. Um, you killed it so natural, awkward in the best way, charming, irritating, et cetera. What's your acting background? <laughs> That's a funny question. Um, uh, my acting background is just doing it, doing films and TV and here and there and theater, You've been at mostly it for a while, theater. Though, right? What's that? You've been at it for a while, though, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I yeah, I've been at it since in film since I was like ten, um, and just doing films here and there, and then little TV things and whatnot, um, and then theater just all throughout, like when I was growing up and stuff. Um, but yeah, wait, what was the was that the question? I don't, I don't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was about your acting back. Yeah, cool. Well, yeah, yeah. that's it. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it was cool. Like this was this was definitely like something that I had to be a part of. Like from the moment I saw the script, like this was super important and truthful. And these are these are the scripts that you look forward to as an actor. Like you always go out for like whatever comes your way, of course, you know. But like these are the things that you're like, I've gotta gotta work on this. So <laughs> yeah. Um, what do you, what if people, there's a question from uh, Eliza Camerling Brown who says, what do you feel like you took most away from the process of making this film? Like, what did you learn from making this film that you didn't expect to? Does anyone have anything that you want to talk about on that question? Uh, yeah, I mean, for, for me, I think I learned to like, I don't know, I felt like every other project I had been a part of, it was like, go do the project and leave and then like hopefully you see it somewhere you know but this one i you know i know everybody who worked on it like personally and closely and i continue to work with some of them and i continue to talk with them and stuff and and that's less about after the project and more about when you're creating those relationships on set the movie's going to be better so if that makes sense mm -hmm. so that's what i took away from this so yeah a way that uh, we really need to, especially as a young woman, you need to make your own things and write your own stories and seeing all these amazing women on the creative team make this film and have it be where it is and watching it blossom now, it's been so inspiring. And I remember watching the film with my roommate, who's also an actor, and we watched it and we closed it, we were like, okay, what are we writing? Like, this is our plan. These are the scripts I wanna write. Um, so yeah, I took away just inspiration and also a feeling of hope for the industry that it's not just this cutthroat, scary place. It's, you know, there's space for stories like these. I think for me, I took away 
so much business stuff and the financial aspect that I never thought about um, at all, but is what really makes it and how to make pitch packages and how to pitch it to different people and log lines and summarizing and things that maybe aren't super fun and are pretty difficult. Um, but just seeing kind of how Jesse really just pushed through and really made it happen. Um, but yeah, the business side, I had not thought about at all and how it's, and how it's going to be with you business wise for, you know, 10 years, you know, it's like, you're always as much as you are involved in the story for the rest of your life also financially. Um, yeah. Jesse, do you have anything you want to add? There's so much. There's <laughs> so, yeah, all everything that everyone said, I think really resonated. Um, yeah, I don't think starting, I had any idea how much this would like totally take over my life. <laughs> um, and, uh, and, and in every aspect. Um, and, but the thing that, yeah, I think about the most I think are, yeah, the people and the relationships and like Lindsay, what every night, I mean, it's funny. I think we're, we keep talking about production because like it's all the actors here and like, but there was like two years of post and like all those relationships and like, you know, five more like fun, like yeah. trying to raise more money and like, you know, like hustling. So, um, but I just think about this image for some reason of production of um, like after, we would finish loading the gear into Lindsay's basement and then she would go and we would water her grass and we'd just be like, okay, what did we learn? And we'd like sort of break down the day. And it was just like this tiny, tiny, very mundane meditative moment of just like Lindsay holding the, the hose and, <laughs> and watering her grass. And we were just kind of like be coming down. Um, so I don't know. I think it's, I also want to take from this a reminder to myself and all of us, I guess, to like water, water your grass, you know, also like fill up your life, fill up your heart. Your relationships are, are really important um, and they will feed the stories that we tell. So. Can I just add to that real fast? It's just this kind of the same thing about how everybody came together so well and did such a great job on their own. And Scott, I mean, it shot the movie I think was just incredible. I mean, just so easy going the entire time. And um, I think that was just so great to have such a family together and see him do that. I really, I, I'm a big fan of Scott as well. I just wanted to add that. Yeah, the crew, the five of the crew is underrated, uh, yeah. especially when you're making a, actually on any size of a production. So, um, I just shout them out. Um, I just have one more question before we wrap up. And it was, um, uh, I saw that it was dedicated to Michael and Annie. I just wanted to know who those people are. Yeah, so Michael's my dad and Annie is my aunt Jessica's mom. So yeah, dedicated the, the film to them. Yeah, well, that makes sense. And it's lovely. And congratulations on making such a beautiful film and uh, helping all of us who are dealing with loss figure out and have a, a you know sort of an avenue to see someone else process that grief. Um, how uh, can people sh help share and spread the word and get other people um, the information they need to get watching? Thank you, thanks, Megan. Yeah, so you can find the film on um, Oscilloscope's website. You can watch it three ways through Oscilloscope's virtual cinema. There's just a button you can click. There's also um, independent cinemas that will be screening the film virtually as well. So if you buy a ticket, you can support not only independent film, but also those independent cinemas, which really, really need our support right now. And then also VOD everywhere. You can find it on you know, the iTunes, the Amazon, Fandango, uh, what are the other ones? Voodoo, Google Xbox. Play. What'd you say? Google Play, iTunes. Google Play, Amazon. They're all, yeah, there's so many. They're just so many. Everywhere. <laughs> yes. And I know how, as a filmmaker myself, I know how critical it is for people to spread the word. So if you are watching this and you enjoyed this, please tell people that you 
know to do the same and uh, and get it out there. So thanks everybody. Um, it was really lovely to um, get to talk about this beautiful movie with you guys. Thank you, Megan, so much. Thanks, Megan. Thanks, Megan. thanks everybody. Thank thanks, everyone. you. Hello, bye. <laughs>